by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. And I'm Janelle Slade. An intense one day job interview will whittle four candidates down to one to become the next Billing City Administrator. Those four finalists making their pitch to take over the reins from retired Administrator Tina Volick, who's held the city's top post for the past 10 years. Now, council members will decide and hope to announce Friday who gets the job. So let's take a look. First up today, Ron Alice. He's the current Helena City Manager. And he told the council today he's happy in his current role and it would be hard to leave the capital city after 18 years there in management. In fact, he told the council the only job in the state he'd consider or want is the city administrator's job here in Billings. Alice said he believes the biggest challenge facing communities today is to update aging infrastructure. The second morning interview, Kevin Smith, the current director of the Truckee Tahoe Airport District in Nevada City, California. Smith has spent his entire career in public administration, including management of a small suburb outside Salt Lake City, Utah. Smith is married to a Skyview High School graduate, and they were married here in Billings. Smith says he looks for opportunity to find buy-in on issues from city staff and city council. First up this afternoon, it was David Fraser's turn in front of the commission. Fraser grew up in northeast Wyoming, but he has spent over 20 years in city management in Kansas, Michigan, Colorado, and Nevada. His most recent job, city manager in Boulder City, Nevada. That's a community near the Hoover Dam. Fraser said after touring the Magic City today, it feels like a good fit for he and his family. And wrapping up the finalist interview is Greg Doyon, the current Great Falls city manager. Doyon waded through some serious economic issues in Great Falls. Now today he discussed his view on dealing with funding for Billings Public Safety and city finances. He said it would be important to develop a good working relationship with the city council. Doyon also spent time as a city manager in Franklin, New Hampshire. Now the council hopes to decide who the new city administrator is tomorrow morning. That individual will replace Tina Volick again, who retired on September 30th. The end of an era today in Billings Justice Court. After 42 years of service, Yellowstone County Justice of the Peace, Pedro Hernandez, presided over the bench for the last time. Hernandez submitted his letter of resignation back in September, saying that it was time to put down his gavel and focus on his family. The hardened native was appointed to the bench in 1975, that after serving in the U.S. Air Force during the Vietnam War. He also worked for the Billings Police Department. Judge Hernandez says the past decades on the bench were more than a job, it was his passion. Here in Billings, too many children spend their childhood in the hospital or the courtroom instead of the playground. That's because across the nation, reports of child abuse are on the rise. But as Q2's Asia Gore explains now, an organization of unlikely heroes is helping kids heal. Sugar hops on his bike, a cigarette between his teeth, ready to hit the road. Don't be fooled, he didn't get his biker name Sugar because he's sweet. I got hit with a sugar beet while I was on my bike. Sugar, along with Elvis, Sippy, Spice, Shaggy and Twister, ride for Baca, Bikers Against Child Abuse. Bikers is our first word, yes, we are bikers. And I think that's why it works with the children because we are intimidating and they get that sense of comfort that they know that nobody's going to mess with them anymore because their new family is bigger and better than their purpose. Baca is a nationwide organization with the Yellowstone River chapter here in Billings. They may look tough, but when it comes to kids, they have soft hearts. All their rights were taken away from them. Um, they weren't allowed to be a kid anymore. We step in and let them be that kid. Baca empowers young victims, taking them for a group ride, letting them choose a biker name, and giving them a personalized vest. You go from them being scared, wanting nothing to do with you, that you're just another adult that's going to let them down, to having them come running outside and just to watch them bloom. Baca members undergo months of specialized training so they can help kids face their abusers here in the courtroom. I don't really focus on what's being said in the trial. I, I try to send all my positive energy to the child so that they can do what they have to do on the stand and I'm strictly there for them and nothing else. It's a sense of security and support that one Billings mother says may have saved her child's life. My daughter was raped by somebody that we cared about and trusted. 
She says her daughter began cutting herself in an effort to cope. But after she found a Baca flyer and reached out. I was contacted the next day by a lady named Sippy. Everything changed. My girls had nightmares for a long time. They don't have nightmares no more. They learned that it's okay to be broken and that there are people out there that do care and won't hurt them. In that moment, when a child is no longer afraid and the wounds begin to heal is the reason Baga rides. We call it the payday. When you see that child that's not scared anymore, that is not crying, that's actually sleeping through the night. And that's what makes our hearts sing. That's what makes us do what we do every day. Oh, it's awesome. It's cloud nine. You know, you leave the courtroom and you're just, your bike's not even on on the ground. You're just floating in air as you're as you're going home and it's the most amazing feeling in the world. In Billings, I'm Asia Gore, MTN News. Thanks, Asia. Great program, great story. BACA members, by the way, are not paid for their work. It is all volunteer. And if you or someone you know could benefit from BACA, you can find their contact information on our website right now, ktvq.com. The Montana Highway Patrol honored one of its own today, or honored its own today. Three officers received the Medal of Valor this afternoon. Troopers Trevor Chase and Darvin Meese received the honor for their acts of heroism during a standoff situation in Laurel. Trooper Shane Wareheim awarded the Medal of Valor for his brave actions during a hostage situation in Joliet. The department also said an emotional goodbye to longtime Trooper Joe Coughlin. Coughlin, a member of the Montana Highway Patrol for 32 years, retired last year after a cancer diagnosis. Loved by everyone he worked with, Coughlin stayed in the same role his entire career and rarely took a day off. Proof of that by the 2,000 hours of sick time he had remaining at the end of his career. Yeah, my first day on the Highway Patrol was uh, Custer, Montana, and that was my very first addition and my very first station. <laughs> Never left. I loved what I did. Uh, I didn't do anything wrong. I mean, I, everybody seemed happy about it. Uh, um, I mean, there was always some things you got in trouble about, and, and, and they got in them troubles about a lot of stuff. But it turned out okay. And a fun fact about his long and successful career, Coughlin estimates that he ate lunch well over 1,000 times at Perkins during those 32 years. The 30, 32nd Annual Festival of Trees, that is, a benefit for the Family Tree Center, kicks off this weekend here in Billings. And this year, a group of incarcerated women is helping the organization's mission. They're putting an end to child abuse by getting in touch with their creative side. Tonight, Q2's Victoria Hill brings us the story. Everyone gets one bulb. Of the 40 trees set to be part of this year's Festival of Trees, one has its beginnings here at the Passages Correctional Facility for Women. This year's tree, a tribute to members of the United States military, past and present. We're going to have dog tags so that when people go through the Festival of Trees, they can write in a name of somebody and hang it on our tree. Um, it's really to just pay tribute and show honor and thanks for our free, having our freedom because of these people. What may seem like a simple arts and crafts activity means so much more to the inmates. Something as to us as simple as a Christmas bulb and, and they're just excited about what they got to create. Their creations have a deeper meaning. It all goes to help the Family Tree Center, whose mission is to build stronger families and prevent child abuse and neglect. It makes me feel very good that we can be a part of something because most of us in the system have been neglected ourselves or come from abusive backgrounds. So it's really touching and honoring that we get to support other families. You know, I didn't really grow up in, I mean, I grew up in a good home, but you know, there were some problems. So I mean, just to know that I can help somebody out like me, it, that's, it feels really good. I, I heard them just say that, that they feel like they're a part of maybe a prevention of one, if they can save one life, you know, or, or help one life. And with Christmas right around the corner, each good deed takes them one step closer to being with family again. It's terrible missing my kids and I haven't seen them since last October, so this will be the best Christmas ever. It's the perfect Christmas present and I get out right before Christmas, so that'll be great. I've missed the last three or four Christmases. So I'm very excited to get to be you and just to have a new journey. In Billings, Victoria Hill, MTN News. 
And Victoria tells us if you'd like to see the finished product, well, you have to go to the Festival of Trees to see it for yourself. And here are the details. Public viewing kicks off tomorrow afternoon down at Metro Park Expo Center. The public viewing continues through Saturday. You can visit our website, ktvq.com, right now for all of those details. Still to come on tonight's 530 News, it's that time of year again. Toys for Tots gears up for another Christmas season. And coming up later in sports tonight as we await official confirmation on Bobby Houck's hiring as the new Grizz football coach, we find two very different viewpoints here from both sides coming up. And coming up in weather, we were on the backside of a cold front today, but we still managed to warm up to 47 degrees. We have another cold front coming in tomorrow. We'll tell you what that means coming up in just a few more minutes. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.